Okay, let me start. Today we are going to talk about the convolutional neural network. So before starting, let's recap the our last week's lecture. So uh, in the last week, we introduced the deep learning, right? So uh, especially deep combo, uh, deep neural network. So as you can see here, the uh, deep learning related work were the uh, company or the industry uh, increasing uh, dramatically something like this. So in deep learning was success in many applications such as the image classification, machine translation, uh, speech recognition, speech synthesis, the game playing, something like this. So uh, why now? Because there there are three kind of religion. The first one is the uh, algorithm. The second one is the data. The third one is the computational um, power, such as the GP, uh, GPU. So, so now we are living in the deep learning world. So as you can see here, comparing to the conventional or the traditional learning algorithms, such as the logistic regression or just linear regression or the SVM, something like this, the large scale deep neural network can benefit from the uh, a number of a large scale number of the amount of data. So so by using the deep neural network, we can get the uh, a very high comp uh, high per uh, performance game comparing to the conventional module so so if we think about the binary classification problem such as the image classification so the the uh we we can use the multi uh we can use the mlp or the multiple uh perceptron neuron so we can see the what, what what was that. So okay, this is the logistic regression and SVM here. So there were two kinds of loss function, right? So if we uh, summarize the conventional uh, logistic regression or the SVM, the the problem setting was something like this. So here is the input input signal x n, right? So there is the learnable parameter. W right so and here's a mapping function right so for example if we if we want to use the conventional logistic regression or the SVM we just use the uh, double transfer times xn as a mapping function and then we define the loss function so loss function is designed to uh, to to measure the distance between the estimated value with the ground truth value so there are some several kinds of the loss function, but here deep neural network or the deep learning uh, focuses on here. So the this mapping function. So the today we will we will derive the more uh, complex um, mapping function comparing to this uh, linear regression function, right? So okay, so so the starting uh, starting point was the perceptron inspired by neurobiology like this, right? So actually, the perceptron is just a simple, um, simple, very uh, simple model for the this neuron, right? So comparing to the this linear regression, the neural network consisting of the uh, more deeper, uh, much deeper, la hidden layer, something like this. So comparing to the this one, the learnable parameter here uh, much higher than the conventional module so and then here is one more difference they use the um, this activation function right to uh, to make the this module have the uh, nonlinear uh, nonlinear mapping function right so yeah so here's the definition so this is the input layer this is output layer the intermediate nodes are called the hidden layer, right? So this is the uh, very simple version of the neural network. So actually, neural network is also called the fully connected network or the multi-layer perceptron. So today we will see the uh, more uh, more deep uh, formulation of the this neural network. So yeah, 
So here is the activation function, right? So there are several kinds of activation functions, such as the ReLU or the liquid ReLU, something like this. But actually, the ReLU is the good different choice for the most problems. So most of the um, nowadays convolutional module use the uh, ReLU function to uh, to get the non-linearity uh, in the activation functions, right? So yeah, here. So so to train the this neural network, we we can use the gradient descent, as in the S uh, as in the SVM or the linear regression or the or the logistic regression, right? So to train the this network, we need the this one, right? So the uh the gradient or the derivative of the loss function, uh, with respect to the each parameter, right? Wj, right? But as you can see here, to train the each parameter in terms of the loss function is really hard to uh, minimize because the there are so many trainable parameters, right? So we need a more uh, clever way to solve this prop solve this limitation, right? So we propose the uh, computational graph for the backpropagation algorithm, right? So here is the example. So Rather than comp uh, computing this gradient for each each parameter uh, independently, we use the we use the backpropagation, right? What was the backpropagation? If we compute the gradient on this layer or up layer, we can use the this one to compute the gradient of this one and this one and this one by formulating something like this, right? Actually, this term is called, uh, this formulation is called the chain rule, right? So, yeah, by using the, this chain rule, we can backpropagate the um, output loss gradient into the uh, our uh, each parameter gradient, something like this, right? So, this is the uh, core algorithm to train the convolution neural network. We will see this one uh, in today's lecture or next. Uh, and next lecture, okay? And then, yeah, we can generalize this one in the in the uh, neural uh, natural representation, something like this, right? And, and then we can extend this one into the back, uh, vector to vector or the vector to scalar uh, things, right? So why, why, we, why we need this? Because if we can think about each layer as a node, and this one is W as a runnable parameter, then this uh, gradient can be the vector or matrix, right? So by using the this one, we can easily derive the um, each gradient for each, uh, for each node, right? So comparing to the previous one, this one, now we can have we have the new tool to uh, train the uh, parameter at at each node something like this by using the Jacobian and gradient right so this is the uh, overall uh, overall or the general algorithm for the um, computation graph and back propagation, which is the core algorithm to train the convolution neural network. Okay, so today we will start to see the what is the convolution neural network. Okay, okay, let's start. So, okay, people are starting. Let's recap. So, as you can see here, if we have the input something like this, and the perceptron, the original perceptron have the uh, some kind of weight with the uh, uh, summation term with the nonlinearity function or the activation function, right? So this is uh, just one perceptron. And what is the multi-output perceptron? This is a one perceptron. And if we can use the another perceptron, this is called the multi-output uh, multi perceptron, right? So what was the multi-layer perceptron or called the NLP? We can use the additional hidden layer Right, something like this. Right. Then, what was the dim neural network? If we increase the number of the hidden layer, something like this, this, that this is called the dim neural network. So this is the definition of the dim neural network. Okay. So, 
Let's think about the deep neural network on the large input or the large scale input. Okay, if we think about the image classification, something like this, we want to classify the, this image as a cat or non-cat, then then machine or the or the deep neural network just see the this image as a, some set of the some set of the pixel value, something like this. Right? So let's think about the size of the this input. Okay, usually the size of the input is really large, such as um, if we use the um, Galaxy or the iPhone uh, camera, the, the, the size of the pixel is the larger than the one uh, 4K nowadays, right? So it means that the size of the image has the, has the uh, 10, uh, 1000 pixel on the height, 1000 pixel on the uh, width, with the uh, three, three pixel and uh, three values for each pixel because this is a color image, right? So in this case, the size of the, this input vector is something like uh, one thousand by one thousand by three, right? So in this case, this uh, this right, this is really large. Right, so in this case, if we just use the dim neural network like this one, well, what is the size of the this parameter W? Let's say there is a, um, there is a, let's say one, one hundred, one hundred hidden uh, hidden node here. Then what is the size of the W? So in this case, you will be the, um, okay, this is the million, right? Three million times the 100, right? So this is really hard, uh, really large, uh, really big, and this, and this is really hard to train. So actually, this is not infeasible, so we need a more clever way to deal with this one. So this is a starting point of a convolution on your network. Okay, so what is a convolution neural network? So the let's start the convolution neural network. The comparing to the conventional neural network, the key idea of the convolution neural network is the local processing of the data. So when you think about the uh, 1D signal, such as the uh, audio or the speech signal or the 2D signal, such as the image. The, when you think about uh, this signal as a uh, one input value, the, it will be really hard to deal with, as you can see here, right? So the main idea of the convolution neural network is to, uh, is to process the data in a local manner. So for example, if we can think about this local region, something like this, or something like this, or in 2D, sp 2D space, if we can extract the information from the this, uh, local region, uh, we can uh, we can solve the limitation of the this one. I mean, so by sharing the parameter of each local window, we can get the benefit that a filter that is useful in the one part of the signal is uh, probably useful in another part of the signal. So it means that so by sharing this filter parameter here, here, and here, then uh, we can get the benefit each other. Or if we share the parameter, this one and this one, uh, we can estimate the output from the each local region with the same parameter. So this is the core idea of the convolution neural network. Another benefit of the convolution neural network is the, is the sparsity of the connection. So in each layer, each output value depends only on a single number of the input. So what I mean comparing to the previous neural network, by sparsely connecting the each neuron, something like something like this, something like this, 
we don't we don't need to the connect every node for each output so we can get the sparsity of the connection so this is the uh, main reason that we use the convolution neural network okay so this is the main idea of convolution neural network so let's see the detail actually uh, convolution neural network is not uh, not started uh, recently let's let's see the a bit of the data a bit of the history Actually, in the 1980, there was the neocognitron that is used a similar technique in the convolution neural network. As you can see here, in this paper, they only focusing on the local part to ask to extract the information from the signal, something like this. And then by using the multi-layer, they aggregate the data using the some kinds of the hierarchical uh, neural module, right? So this is the similar idea in convolution neural network. Uh, in 1998, uh, there was the Lunet paper by the Yan Li Kun, who, uh, who is the director of the Facebook uh, research AI, work called the Parallel. Uh, actually, uh, he's now the very famous guy in deep neuron, uh, deep convolution neural network nowadays. Anyway, so the when we have the input something like this, we want to classify this character as a ten output, right? So to solve this problem, rather than using the neural network, he used the convolution neural network that used the local region to extract the information for each pixel, right? And then by using the another convolution here, he extract another information, something like this, right? So rather than rather than extract the information for each uh, for every pixel for one one output, this module used the local out, uh, local region to extract the uh, output for each region, something like this, right? So this is the uh this is the starting point of the convolution neural network. And then, more recently, there was the AlexNet in 2012. Actually, AlexNet is the first, uh, first success in, the, in convolution neural network because the, after this paper, uh, most of, or every, I can say every, every, almost every paper used the deep convolution neural network to solve their own method, right? So as you can see here, after AlexNet, the performance gain was uh, really uh, large than the previous, uh, previous performance gap. And then in 2015, the one paper uh, even uh, outperforms the human's performance. And in, now, now, 2020, there was so many paper that even outperform from this one. Okay, so so I can say now nowadays we are living in the deep convolution neural network world, world deep learning world. Anyway, uh, at the end of the uh, today's lecture, we will see the what it is. But here we can just skip the detail. Okay, and then okay. Now we are living in the convolution neural network. So, so many applications or the industry or the um, method have been reformulated using the deep convolution neural network. For example, image classification, we can improve the performance using the convolution neural network. Another application is image retriever, uh, which is used in the Google image search, something like this. So, as you can see here, by using the this query image, we can find the nearest neighbor using the deep neural network. Another application is object detection. As you can see here, we we can extract, uh, we can localize the object, something like this, something like car or the something like person here. So by using the deep convolution neural network, we can successfully detect the object on the image. Another example is the semantic segmentation. So as you can see here, by using the convolution neural network, we can extract the segmentation part with the semantic labor as a person here, tree here, or the building here, something like this. Okay, so this is the semantic segmentation application. Another application is the self-driving car. 
such as, uh, such as the Google uh, self-driving car, right? As you can see here, we can now we can drive. Uh, we can we can make a car who uh that uh that drive themselves without any human um human intention, right? So this is another example, and another example is the satellite imaging or the sign recognition or image captioning. The image captioning is to describe the image without any uh, caption. So if we see the this image, the machine can describe the image as a, uh, a white teddy bear sitting in the glass, something like this. So this is the uh, very interesting example that used the convolution neural network, right? Another example is uh, here, right? So as you can see here, we have the content image, right? And if we have the style image, what you want to do is generate a new image that has the content here with the style here. So this is the new generated image, right? So another example is here with this content image and with this the style image, maybe the ghost art. I'm not sure. Anyway, so by using the this style image, we can generate the new ghost like the image something like this okay so this is very interesting application anyway now there's so many application benefit from the convolution neural network okay so what is the convolution okay uh let me, let me see the detail the okay let's think about the perceptron first uh, when we think about the input image uh, 32 by 32 by 3 then to use the perceptron, we have to stretch it to the uh, 3072 by 1, right? Okay, let's read through this, something like this. So here is the uh, 372, right? And the output, the output here, there is the 10 node, right? So if we use the perceptron, we have to connect every node each other, like this, right? So in this case, the number of nodes or the number of parameter in between them is the 10 by 3072, right? So here, right? So to estimate the one output here, one output here, we have to compute the dot product between loss of W with the input. So something like this, right? So actually this is very large number of the parameter then, and then if we increase the hidden layer, something like this, the, the number of parameter will increase dramatically or the or the exponentially, right? So actually, it is not feasible to to learn the parameters. So we need a more clever way to solve this one. So we now introduce the convolutional module, right? So as I mentioned before, the main idea of the convolution layer is to is to preserve the uh, special structure, right? So as you can see here, if we have the input image or the input signal. So what you want to do is to use the uh, five by five by three filter, which is the much smaller than the this one, right? And then convolve, convolve the this filter with the signal. So that is the slide over the image, especially computing that product. So, 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 yeah. Let's see here. So. With uh, this filter, we can extract the input image, something like this, and then convolve, convolve each other to extract the one output, right? So, so by slide, uh, by sliding this one over the image, especially, we can extract the output or the uh, hidden node or the hidden layer rather than 
uh, more efficiently rather than using the this perceptron. Okay, so this is the main idea of convolution layer. And here's the one interesting, uh, interesting property. The filter always extend the full depth of the input volume, like this. Actually, there's no reason to. There's no reason that we have to make the filter filter that has that has the full depth of the input volume, but. By definition, we want to we 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 just to use the same number of the uh, filter in the depth axis to reduce the computation time. Of course, there is another way to uh, another method that use the uh, different number of the uh, filter. But here, generally, we can use the same uh, size of the input volume. Okay, so anyway, by using the this filter, we can combo the filter with the image, right? So this is the main technique in the convolution layers. So yeah, here is the detail. Okay, let's say we have an image, something like this, and the filter, something like this. So the let's say the, the parameter in the filter is represented by the W, right? And then one number, one output here is the result of taking a dot product between the filter, filter and the small uh, five by five by three chunk of the image. So in this case, so in this case, let's say the the small chunk of data as a vector x, right, and the uh, parameter as a w here, then. Then the output of the, this one convolution is the W transpose by X plus W. So when we compare to this one, to the linear, com uh, linear, linear, um, what was that? Um, logistic regression or the linear regression. This one computation is similar to the, those previous one, but by convolving this one, Across the special domain, we can generate the uh, number of output by by only using the small number of filters or the small uh, small parameter. Okay, so 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 by combining the this filter over the whole special location, something like this, or something like this, or something like this, or something like this. We can generate the new output from the input by using the shared uh, convolution filter to generate the a new hidden layer. Okay. Okay. So this is the convolution layer. So, so as I mentioned before, the if we have the image and if we have a filter something like this by convolving this over the whole special location, we can generate the something like. 28 by 20 by 8 by 1 output here then we can call uh, this output as an activation map okay so this is the definition of the activation map so if you start to study the deep learning you can you can hear the uh, the, what is the size of the activation map or the what is the shape of the activation web or the activation fun, uh, activation volume something like this anyway so the hidden layer in the convolutional uh, hidden hidden output of the convolution layer is called the activation map okay anyway by using the one filter one filter we can estimate the activation map something like this right and then if we consider the second green filter, second green uh, filter, whose size is the five by five by three, then we can generate another activation map, another activation map, something like this, right? By using the two kinds of filter here, uh, blue one and green one here, we can generate the activation volume, something like this. So in this case, the size of the activation map is the uh, 80, uh, 28 by 28 by 1, right? 
So this is called the uh, uh, activation map. So that's it. And then if we have the six five by five filter comparing to this one, okay. In this case, we only consider the two filters, right? Then if we have the six filter, actually there is, is the, of course there is the, uh, there is a one more axis here, right? And then we will get the six separate activation map here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? So by using the one convolution layer that consists of the six, five by five filters, then we can generate the new activation map. Something like this, whose size is uh, 28 by 28 by uh, six. So by stacking this up to get the new image or the activation maps or the activation volume of size uh, 28 by 28 by six, we can, we can generate the uh, uh, hidden, hidden node. Uh, within the deep convolution neural network. Okay, so this is the uh, core algorithm of the convolutional layer, right? So uh, to summarize, the component or the convolution neural network is a sequence of the convolution layer, something like this, is uh, inspired with the activation function like the value. So what was that? What was that? If you go back to the our lecture nine, where is that? Here, right? So in neural network, we need uh, some kinds of activation function, right? Here. So in convolution neural network, we also need the activation function, right? So from the input image, we can build the convolutional module with the Lely function or the activation function. For example, six, five by five by three filter, right? Then we can generate the new uh, activation map here. And then by stacking another convolutional module here, uh, here, right? Or here, something like this, we can go deeper, right? So what I mean by starting from the input image or the input signal, we can go further by using this one, uh, by, by using the convolutional module with the Lely function. So we can generate the another activation map or by using another one, we can generate another activation map like this. So this is why called, uh, this is why this, this whole module is called the deep convolution neural network, okay? So this is the uh, main structure of the deep convolutional neural network. So, of course, the because this is the six, right? So uh, this part should be six, right? And to estimate this one value, we have to consider the five by five local region, something like this, right? Right? Like this. Okay, so this is the uh, main structure of the convolutional neural network. Okay, so as you can see here, this is the activation map, right? Some kind of the here or here or here. In in this case, this is the only image, right? So it might be here, right? So and then this is the filter something like the five by five. In this case, there are uh, 32 filters, right? And, and the, by the way, why this filter has the color? Why this filter has color? Why? Because the, this, cur uh, this filter has the size of five by five by three, right? Because the size of the input was the 32 by 32 by 3, right? Anyway, so by convolving this one and this one, we can generate the one activation map here, right? And if we, if we apply the one more filter here, 
then we can generate the one activation map here, right? Because we have the 32 filters, we can generate the uh, 32 activation map, right? So those kinds of things can fill the new activation map, something like this, uh, uh, 28 by 28 by what? 32, right? Something like this, right? So this is the um, one convolutional layer, right? So as you can see here, each convolutional, uh, each filter in convolutional layer generate or the extract the uh, specific patterns in the signal, something like this. So, so every filter has their own uh, their own rule to extract the uh, information from the signal. So by stacking everyone, all of them, we can extract the uh, comprehensive the information from the inf image. Okay. So th this is the convolution layer. So we call this layer is convolutional because uh, it is related to the convolution of the two signal. So, so. Let's say we have the signal F and signal G in 2D space. We can combo this one, something like this, element-wide multiplication and sum of the filter and signal, in this case, image. So that's why we call this layer as a convolution. Okay, so this is just the one convolution layer, right? So by stacking, uh, uh, by stacking many convolutional module, something like the uh, one convolution layer, two convolution layer, three convolution layer, we can extract the much higher dimensional information here, 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 right? So as you can see here, this is just very, uh, um, how to say, uh, shallow information from the in input signal, but by stacking the convolutional layer, we can extract the more uh, semantic meaning from the from from the signal. For example, oh, like a bird, uh, or what else, like a car, something like this. By stacking the convolutional layer, we can extract the more meaningful semantic meaning, right? So comparing the previous or the traditional uh, machine learning algorithm by using the convol deep convolutional neural network, uh, we can extract the hierarchical uh, information. So, so we, can, we can dramatically improve the performance on, on our, on, on our own um, application, right? So this is the hierarchy of the convolution layer, right? So yeah, that's it. So this is the main idea of the convolutional layer. By the way, let, uh, let's close a look at the uh, special dimension, special dimension. So this is the image, right? Whose size is the 32 by 32 by 3, right? Uh, and there is a one filter whose size was the 5 by 5 by 3, right? Then let's combo the them. Let's combo the, this filter over the whole special ledger location. Then we can generate the activation map, right? And then why there is a 28? Why there, why the output activation map is the 28 by 28 by one uh, tensor, why? Here's the reason. If we want to combo the uh, five by th five by five by three filter, then it will be the starting point, right? It will be the end point, right? Then here, because we cannot get the information for this one, because there is no information outside the border, so so we can 
get the reduced the special resolution, right? So that's why we got the eight uh, twenty eight by twenty eight by one output, right? So so what is the output size of something like this? Okay. Uh, let's think about. There is the seven by three, seven input with the three by three filter, right? For example, three by three filters are here, right? Then one output will be something like this, right? From here, right? Another output should be something like this, right? One next here. Something like this. And then one next here, here, right? Same procedure should be done by the uh done by the width axis, right? Something like this. Something like this. So it will be looks like this, right? So finally the output, special resolution of output should be what? Five by five, right? Right. So this is the uh this is the main uh, uh general uh general uh convolution in uh, with the seven by seven input with the three by three filter, right? Then let's think uh, about another concept called the stripe. Okay, so let's think about the uh, we have the seven by seven input and three by three filter, which uh which is applied with the stride two. So what is the stride two? Okay, so if we have the three by three filter, we can generate the one output like this, and then the next should be start here in general, but if we use the stride then next one should be start here and make output here so the stride 2 means this is the center point of the first output and the next output should be uh, 2 pixel after something like this 2 pixel and then and then Another output should be here, here, right? After two pixel, so something like this, right? So, right? And in the y-axis there is this, right? So it means that by using the stride. We can generate the. Uh, we can reduce the special resolution of the output. So in this case, the the size of the output should be three by three, right? So comparing to the five by five, we generate the more, uh, much smaller output, right? So why we need a stride? Why we need a stride? The first reason is that we can reduce the special resolution by using the stride concept it means that in some case the output or the uh, output or the input signal has the too large dimension uh, too large dimension features so by using the stride concept we can reduce the we can reduce the redundancy information from the input activation map okay so this is the uh, reason this is the reason that we use the stride concept right so in general if we have the m by n input with the f by f filter applied with the stride s then the output the output should be what output should be okay let's say this is n this is the filter, right? F five F, and with the stride, right? 
then the size of outside should be n minus f over s plus 1. Okay, so actually, this, this is really easy to derive the, this formulation. So, please um, do in yourself because this is really important. This is really important. Uh, as a beginner, you need to this one uh, by your hand, but uh, if you start to familiar with the deep learning, actually you don't need to compute every uh, special resolution. But but if you don't if you don't understand this mechanism, you might be confused every time. So please, if you if you are beginner of the deep learning, so please try to derive the this output yourself. Okay. Okay. So generally. Actually, the the limitation or the inherent inherent outcome of the this convolution is the here border, right? In some case, we want to need we want to extract the information from here from here, but as you can see here, there is no information. So we can't do that, right? So that's why we start from here, right? But in some case, we need to extract the information on the border, uh, border region, right? So in practice, it is common to zero path on the, bo uh, the border. So as you can see here, to extract the information for this pixel, the kernel should be applied here because there is no information here. We can pad the zero values here on the outside the border, something like this. Okay, so this is called the uh, zero padding, right? So comparing to the um, standard convolution layer by using the zero padding, we can preserve the special resolution, right? So, so it means that, let's say we have the input n by n, FIF filter applied with the uh, stride S paired with the P pixel, P pixel, right? Let's say this is input, this is the output, right? With the stride, stride, with the path. Padding, path. Then the size of the, this one will be m plus 2p negative f o f plus 1 okay why because after padding the this one we can say we have the new image whose size is something like this right so then then this formulation is the exactly similar to the this one right so this is the general rule of the output size right so you can de uh, derive this one by yourself, right? So here's the example. Okay, let's say we have a uh, input seven by seven with a three by three filter applied with the stride one path with a one pixel border. Then, what is the output? What is the output size? In this case, right? Seven by seven. Up. So please try to derive this one by yourself, okay? So this is the general rule in the convolutional layer. Anyway, so every convolutional layer follow the this rule, right? So so by using uh, by adjusting the number of the number of the fil uh, the size of the filter and the stride and the padding we can we can generate the 
any kind of the output from the input activation map, right? So, so this is this is the this uh, this is the uh, network architecture, right? So, so the network uh, network architecture design means to decide the number of the filter and the number of the size of the filter uh, size of the filter and the, the number of the stride and number of the path something like this so this is called the uh, uh, network architecture designing right so as i mentioned before the neural network or the convolutional neural network is inspired by the brain or the neuron right so let's let's find out the relationship between the convolution one convolution layer and the uh, neuron in our brain, right? So if you remember the this convolution layer, the input was the some kind of activation, and with the some filter, right? Then those are computed by the this linear combination, right? Actually, this one is really similar to the one perceptron or the one neuron right one difference is that it's just a neuron with a local connectivity so rather than co uh, considering the every signal we can just compute we can just consider the local region or the local connectivity by using the neuron right right so for example the activation map is twenty by uh, twenty eight by twenty eight neuron output here. So each one connected to the small region, right? Something like this, something like this, right? And then all of them share the parameter, right? Share, share the parameter, right? So, so five by filter means five by five by five recessive field for each region. Okay, so so recessive field means this one, something like this, right? So so it means that the this one convolution in the convolution neural network is connected or related to the uh, neuron in our brain okay so this is the uh, neuron view of the convolutional layer right then if we have the five filter or in convolution layer consisting of the neuron or uh, arranged in the 3d grid then there will be the five different neuron one neuron make this output, another neuron make this output, another make neuron this output from same input signal, right? So there will be the five different neurons all looking at the same region in the input for them, okay? So this is the neuron view of the convolution layer, right? Okay, now in convolution neural network, we introduced the convolution layer and we already know the uh, activation function like this one right and then what else there's one more concept which is called the pooling layer so why we need a pooling layer it is to make the representation or the activation Similar and more manageable, right? So actually, this is uh, related to the stride concept that we introduced. Where is that? Here, right? So, by using the pooling, we can reduce the special resolution by by size of the pulling uh by sizing of the pulling um how to say, um pulling window okay so for example if we <coughs> okay let's see the, this one okay let's think of about the single depth slide in the activation map something like this right the size of should be something like this right so 
what we want to do is to estimate the representative value from the this window, right? So, so there is a two case max pooling or the average pooling. So if you think about the max pooling, we can select the max value within the whole values in the window. So for example, in here, the 6 is the maximum value, right? What about this? 8, right? What about this? 3, right? So what about this? 4, right? So by using the 2 byte, <coughs> two byte max pooling, we can reduce or the, we can, um, we can uh, we can reduce the special size of the input activation, something like this, right? <clears throat> uh, definitely, there is some information losses here. Information loss. Information loss here. But by keeping the most important information here, we can. Uh, <coughs> We can successfully compress the original activation map something like this, so we can deal with uh, this original activation map more, more, uh, more manageable way. Okay, so this is the idea of the pooling layer, right? So to summarize, so by formulating the convolutional layer and ReLU and pooling layer. And by stacking all of them, we can now we now we can build the deep convolution neural network. So so this is called the deep learning or the deep convolution neural network or the deep CNN something like this, right? So so if we have the input signal something like this. In this case, this is the image, right? So by stacking the convolution value, convolution value pooling, convolution value pooling, blah, 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 something like this. And then we can finally estimate the output here, right? So if you comparing to this, this convolution neural network to the our previous the learning algorithm, as you can see, Here in our lecture uh, nine, the uh, conventional method only you uh, just use the this one right, just linear mapping compared to this one. In deep convolution neural network, there are so many parameters with uh, more uh, more efficient, um, not efficient, but more effective. Math, uh, effective modules, something like the pooling, value, convolution things. So we can, we can have the uh, much higher dimensional capacity to extract the information from the signal. Okay. So this is the main idea of the deep learning or the or the convolutional uh, deep convolutional neural network. Okay. Okay. Let's summarize this one in Korean. <coughs> 저번 주부터 해서 저희가 이제는 뉴럴 네트워크가 무엇인지부터 해서 이제 최근에 이슈가 되고 있는 딥 뉴럴 네트워크 더 나아가서 딥 컨볼루션 뉴럴 네트워크가 이제 무엇인지를 사실 봤습니다. 근데 사실 딥 네트워크가 보기 이 그림부터 시작하면 엄청 복잡해 보이는데 사실 메인을 이루고 있는 블락들은 사실 컨볼루션, 렐류, 아, 풀링과 같은 간단한 블락들의 조합입니다. 즉 레고와 사실 동일하죠. 그래서 이제 이런 컨볼루션과 렐류와 풀링 블락을 어떻게 조합을 하느냐에 따라서 내가 내가 원하고자 하는 테스크의 가장 최적화된 네트워크 아키텍처가 무엇이다라고 저희가 찾을 수가 있게 되고 이게 바로 딥러닝에서 연구하고 있는 네트워크 아키텍처 어, 디자이닝이라고 하는 것이 되겠죠. 그래서 사실 이제 이러한 네트워크 아키텍처 디자인은 사실 무한한 가질 수가 있겠죠. 근데 사실 많은 사람들이 이제 어떻게 보면 노가다를 해서 매우 레이버 인텐시브한 작업들을 해서 최적의 네트워크 아키텍처들을 사실 찾아놓은 게 많이 있습니다. 물론 저희가 이제 새로운 문제를 풀고자 하면은 그 새로운 문제에 가장 최적화된 네트워크 아키텍처가 무엇인지는 또잘 찾아야 되는 문제이긴 하지만요. 
그래서 저희가 어떤 딥러닝을 연구한다고 쳤을 때는 우리가 풀고자 하는 문제를 가장 비슷하게 풀었던 어떤 분야를 찾아서 거기에서 어, 해당하는 정보들, 해당하는 네트워크 아키텍처를 가져와서 이제 시작을 하는 게 대부분의 이제 푸는 방법입니다. 어찌됐든 이제 딥러닝의 이제 코어에 대해서는 저희가 배웠고 이제 남은 오늘 시간들에서는 그럼 이제 이 딥러닝 네트워크에 조금 더 구체적인 구조들이 무엇이 있을까에 대해서 조금 더 살펴보고 이제 또 저희가 어떠한 것들을 이제 이 딥, 컨볼루션 뉴럴 네트워크를 통해서 어, 할수 있는지에 대해서 좀더 살펴보도록 하겠습니다. Okay, so this is the main idea of the deep convolution neural network, right? So from now on, let's find out the successful um, deep convolution architecture, and then let's think about the what would be the our um, best option to design the deep neural network. Okay, so let's see the detail. <웃음> 